My name is Reg Turner, and this is the Sailing Vessel Ojigwan. Welcome to another edition of My Boat's Falling Apart. Today our project is pulling off and replacing the mixing elbow, which has come off a three-cylinder, 38 horsepower, Yanmar 3JH 2CE diesel inboard engine with a sail drive. Uh, long story short, my tachometer stopped working and was able to diagnose the problem down to the center was getting some corrosion and bad contacts. This is because the mixing elbow was leaking raw water, salt water onto it. It, it on my engine, it sits directly below the mixing elbow. And so over time, even a tiny leak was causing enough corrosion that it was getting a bad connection and it was, it was causing my tachometer to, uh, to fluctuate. So I was able to get the parts, um, you know, you can see here, there's a replacement sort of backing plate. This will go between the mixing elbow and the, uh, you know, in the, in the engine. And it's pretty easy to install. Uh, the parts aren't that expensive. You know, the tools you're gonna need, like a socket set, um, you know, maybe some anti-seize, some screwdrivers to get the hose clamps off, and, you know, maybe a heat gun. Uh, so I've got a heat gun here. Just when you're taking off the big, you know, engine exhaust hoses, uh, it'll make life a lot easier if you just put a little heat on them, soften them up. It'll make them come off and go on a lot easier. Um, so you can see this is the old one. I've pulled it off. I'll, I'll show you. Uh, we'll go ahead and do both of these today. Um, but you can see just a little bit of scoring and what appears to be just some really, really small cracking that I think probably has led to the leak. Um, these things, they go through quite a lot of temperature change. And, you know, especially if the engine starts out cold in the winter or something like that. Uh, Yanmar sort of has them listed as consumable. Depending on the engine, they're 150 200 bucks a piece. I think I got both of them and the, you know, backing plate for about $450. And it's a couple-hour project. It's not too difficult. So, all right, let's, uh, let's get started. Okay, welcome to my office. That's with... Uh, most projects on the boat, there's not gonna be much room. A lot of it's gonna be blind. You know, we often say if you can see and touch whatever it is you're working on, you're in a pretty good spot. So I just get my uh, tools kind of organized here and uh, there's not a whole lot of room, so there's gonna be a bit of up and down. I like to get everything in here but just because my engine room is pretty small and cramped and it's a pain to have to get in and out so i try to sort of set up most of my tools you know so they're at arm's length here um one of the things i forgot to mention that we're also going to do is we're going to clean off all of the old corrosion so we'll start off with um you know with some wire brushes some sandpaper get to what we can and then after that um i've got a wire brush on a drill and a dremel to get to the fine stuff and then the last thing we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll clean it with a little fresh water, maybe some denatured rubbing alcohol, and then we will we'll hit it with some OSFO. Uh, at that time, the recommendation would be to go ahead and, you know, repaint it or, you know, you know whatever, whatever you want to do. So I think you can kind of see where we're working here. Um, right, right below me is the mixing elbow get a fairly good view of it here and you can see what I was talking about I'll get the light in there you can see what I was talking about that right there is the sender for the tack right here I'm not sure how well you can see it um, on the other side it had a lot of corrosion because you could see it sits right under this mixing elbow and it looks like this one actually has basically the same characteristic corrosion coming out probably some pinhole cracks or something so what it does is it just leaks a tiny little bit of salt water and for me on this engine it's catastrophic this is the main ground where you know all of the electrical stuff ground and you get corrosion there and it just uh it makes life really difficult i've had to chase that down underway in the middle of the ocean um trying to figure out why why i've got a bound bad ground but so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take this off i'm gonna take off the uh you know 
exhaust hose clamps here. I'm going to take off the raw water clamps here. We'll get all, the, all that stuff out of the way and just be aware. You may get a little drainage, a little drip out of this. So, you know, have a, have a place to store that. And then we're going to pull this unit off. I'm going to pull these four bolts here. And, uh, you know, at that point we are, we're going to pull it off. We're going to put the new one in and test it out. What you don't see here is I've already used the heat gun to soften these lines up and I'm just taking off the hose clamps and getting them out of the way, cleaning them up. It's a good time to inspect the exhaust and raw water hoses and make sure that they don't need to be replaced. If they do, it's a pretty simple change, but this is a great time to make sure you're, you're inspecting everything so that it doesn't come back and be an issue for you later. Okay, here we are. Last nut, it actually was a lot easier than the other one was, and a little bit easier than I thought, which is very rare. <laughs> so I'll take the win. Um, so as I'm taking this out, you'll, you'll be able to sort of see. So that's actually not that bad. It'll get, it'll get some corrosion over time. Obviously it's getting just pure salt water. So take a moment and just, you know, I do, a, I take a lot of pictures or I'll, I'll write things down just so I remember how they go back together. So the new one looks a little bit different than this. You'll be able to see there's actually some, some texture on one side. I don't really see that in the old one, but it's pretty self-evident. Ah, there's some, so it's going to go back in this way. Um, but you can see the difference and that's why we're here doing this. So we look at the difference here too. Again, what I think is going on and it's, uh, it's tough to tell and it doesn't take much, but we'll clean this out and we'll take a look, but you can see right there, there's definite corrosion. There's definite salt water coming and that is the enemy of everything in this room. So we think we found the culprit, which is usually pretty good. And uh, so you can sort of see what's going on. I'm gonna take a uh, wire brush and some sandpaper and I'm gonna clean all of this up just to make sure we get a good seal on the, uh, on the next one. Like I said, you can see, man, this stuff down here is just as a nightmare and that will only get worse over time so this is probably long overdue but I'm glad we're doing it all right uh, let's get some of that corrosion off so I got a bit got a little wire brush bit here on my drill on my cordless and uh, yeah it, it definitely be better to get the old uh, eye protection out but I find I can't really use both of them effectively, so. So, last bit, tiny little micro wire brush. This, this, you can't live without a Dremel on a boat. Um, you can see there's tons of different equipment. You got cutters and polishers and sanders and you will need all of it at some point. So I recommend definitely getting one of these. It'll help you get into the tight spots. What I'm doing here is I'm taking off the corrosion underneath the mixing elbow where it had leaked onto the tack sander and this micro wire brush on the Dremel is the best tool you can have to get into all those tight spots. This is the final assembly of the mixing elbow being put in. You can see how clean it is and it goes right in. It's got a nice flush fit with the block. All right. Well, that is one way to change a mixing elbow on a marine diesel. Hope you got some value out of this. <laughs>